Good day, fellow investors. Goldman recently published their investment strategy group outlook on the economy, on the implications of the current crisis, inflation, and their thoughts on gold and Bitcoin. They did a very nice presentation and I received a few questions to go through it, to give my comment through it. So the presentation summarizes all you need to know about these topics at the current point in time and therefore it's very good for me to do some marketing for Goldman. I, I'm sure they don't mind for this YouTube video for educative purposes. I'll put a link also to the presentation down in the description below. Let's start with their call, the overview of their call and I think they are really answering what their clients, the millionaires, the billionaires want to know more about. So update on the COVID situation, the US economic outlook, the dollar, inflation, investing in gold and Bitcoin. Let's start with what they have to say and I'll just shortly discuss that during the commentary here and later also just finish with my look at what is very important from this perspective and this presentation. So this is the global pandemic timeline. We have seen China and then it exploded globally and it's still growing but it's not exponential grow growth anymore now it's really really flat and we have seen especially in the country where I come from complete solution for COVID we don't have it anymore we are free to travel also and that's an improvement and I hope that also all these countries of the US and South America that later incurred in COVID will have the same results as we have now so so let's hope that COVID gets solved soon but you never know what can happen and that's also what they are discussing. So we see the daily new cases and fatalities declining so that is always a better trend than this rising trend. Also many states are reopening which is good for the economy of course and good for the outlook long term. Also US mortgage applications have rebounded, credit card spending is also rebounding which means that it's likely that the worst has happened in April and the stock market prevented that in March of 2020, 20 March something where it hit bottom and then it started expecting an improvement. This improvement happened and consequently stocks went also up. So we will likely not see a depression because we are already rebounding. Q3 is expected to already go into very positive situation, huge growth, rebounding on this situation that was Q2 with very bad COVID situation. So the coronavirus is going to hit US GDP that is inevitable, but and then depending on how it goes, the recovery is also going to be uh, swift according to some expectations. It's not the consensus and that's also something we can never never know. Even when you predict such things, if it is 6.1 up or 7% up in 2021 or 5% up in 2021, those are big differences that impact anything. And nobody, nobody, not even Goldman Sachs can know how will that happen and how will that evolve. If you want to look more in detail and read each of those slides you can always pause the video and then continue. Also as I said there are different views on growth. Some are more positive in the fourth quarter of 2020. Some are a little bit negative. The consensus is more negative. Also how deep will the decline be? That's also an expectation. Plus there can be multiple waves according to some According to others, only a little percent, according to others, a smaller percentage of the population will get infected by COVID. We don't know yet or whether there will be vaccines or not. And there is no visibility regarding uh, vaccines also. So we really don't know what will the future look like in the next six months, year, two years. That's always impossible to know. And as we are now in the COVID crisis, exiting hopefully the COVID crisis, nobody knew about this six 
months ago. So that's something we always have to think about when it comes to investing, that it is likely impossible to know the future, especially if you are in my situation where my crystal ball broke just last week, unfortunately. So therefore, I have to use Goldman's help to have something smart to say. Of course, unemployment, there has been the peak unemployment in March, and then unfortunately still big numbers here. And then we have to see whether this will be permanent or just temporary. For now, those are all, all a temporary job losses, but some of them also per permanent. The longer the situation lasts, the more there will be permanent job loss losers. And therefore also the recovery will be longer lasting. But if there is a recovery, it also always means that we are already ahead. It will not be a depression because unemployment during the depression went up for four years. If it starts improving next quarter, then it's not a depression. Real GDP was down for 12 quarters. That's three years. Also the stock price went, stock, also the stock market from the bubble in 29 went down significantly over a longer period of time. So it's unlikely that there will be an economic depression. Plus the reaction of the Fed of fiscal help of the government has been extremely fast. We have seen all these stimulus packages that are coming in and 13.5% of the GDP has been in the form of fiscal stimulus alongside the Fed's packages. So really, really immediate intervention that should help the situation and should help with the recovery. Of course, on the other hand, government deficits and debt ratios will rise sharply. And we have here also a projection how it will be to 103, 108%, which is significantly higher than the 79% 2019 and amazingly higher from the 35% of GDP in 2007. So we are starting to solve the debt crisis of 2007 with more debt and now the COVID crisis with even more debt. And later we'll discuss inflation and also Goldman Sachs discusses inflation and we will see how that affects. You might or might not disagree with them I don't agree nor disagree, I just try to be ready for everything and or anything and that's something that goes along with my views of this situation. But one thing is sure, global debt to GDP ratios have skyrocketed. Of course also the outlook is for even more debt in the future, this is just the Covid crisis, this spike, this was the banking crisis, this spike. But here you have known social security, Medicare, healthcare liabilities that are still not included this, in this debt pile, but will come in the future. And then each next crisis, what are they going to do? Crisis, boom, crisis, boom. And then the expectation is for a linear increase. Well, who says that we don't, will not have a crisis in 2025, 2027? That's something unpredictable and that's something usually not included in predictions. So that's something we have to, as investors, take into account. To take into account that anything can happen and predict the unpredictable or just be ready for it. Also, the monetary policy response has been significant. They will do whatever it takes to keep employment stable and prices stable. And we have seen here how the financial easing monetary policy intervention has eased financial conditions, which is good. And now the financial conditions are on a long term average. So the Fed has really saved financial conditions, which allows for a normal running of the economy. Inflation is still muted. So given the Fed's intervention, many expected inflation, but we are still mostly in lockdown. Everything is recovering, reopening very slowly. So that has an effect on demand that of course lower prices. So the real effects of this inflation will be seen in the future. It's unlikely that there will be stagflation 
as the economy recovers, but we might see inflation, especially to service those debt levels that are coming in the future. Just a few percentage points of inflation will really ease these debt levels in relation to GDP. So that's something that the Fed fiscal and global monetary policies might want to target. Not 2% inflation, but maybe 3, 4, 5% inflation. Also here we see the Fed's balance sheet has expanded at a record pace. We are now at 7 trillion. So even more money pumped in than into 2008-2009 situation. And we'll see how will this have, what kind of repercussions will this have into the long term. Negative rates, not likely for Jerome Powell, but you never know with this kind of situation. They say they will use all the tools they have and we don't know yet what kind of situation will be there. But as I said, anything can happen. And Goldman Sachs is also saying that anything can happen, even if unlikely for now. So we'll see in the future. The US dollar has been getting stronger. It is the reserve-based currency of the world. It is the safe haven of the world. And no matter the debt, governments, countries, people are still running to the United States dollar. This is something that will likely last for longer until it doesn't, until there is a shift in perception, in trust. And that's something, again, unpredictable and will likely happen to us as a surprise because the world isn't really going shifting in a linear way. If we look at the prior debt levels, you have this linear, 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 slow growth and then big shift. Then linear, 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 slow growth, big shift. Linear, 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 I always expected to be linear, but the world changes in big shifts. And so will also something like that will happen to the dollar. The US is taking advantage of its strength, of its monetary strength position, printing money. As, as long as there is demand, they are okay. But like, it, right, but like Ray Dalio says, this will last until it doesn't, until a new force comes, and then we'll have a decline of a new empire. This is something that might happen tomorrow, might happen in 2049, you never know, but something that you might want to be prepared for. Then on gold, they are showing here how since April 5 through May 26, that's also okay, let's take the best number uh, there, but over the last two years, gold I think has outperformed the S&P 500, so it's not smart to take just the best time out there since the crisis. However, they also give long-term perspectives on gold. We see here the average gold prices over time adjusted for inflation and also the post Bretton Woods average, 918. And now we are a little bit higher. We haven't reached the adjusted for inflation peak earlier peaks, but close to there. I was interested in gold a few years ago when it was really cheap and close to production costs. Now it's again a bet on what might come next and we don't know what might come next. Goldman is not so positive on gold, especially now that it has spiked. Further, if you're an investor, equities have consistently outperformed inflation while gold has not. Gold is more of a hedge that works when it's cheap. So the saying goes there, my opinion is simple there. When nobody wants to touch gold, gold with a 10 foot pole, then it's the time to invest. When gold is hot and everybody wants a piece of it, then you know what's the drill. And I'm, that's my stance of gold. So two years ago, you had a lot of videos on gold miners on this channel. Now, much, much less because now it's hot and it was much better to invest earlier than now. Also, Goldman doesn't like it now and says that gold outperforms only in rare elevated inflation regimes. We don't know whether that's ahead and that's something you also have to 
implementing your gold investment strategy? Are you going to wait for gold to go nowhere for five, seven, ten, nine years, like it was the case since 2011, and hope for another spike, another hedge? So nobody knows what will happen. You just have to know what will you do in case this and that or that happens. So it's all about your strategy. Nobody knows what will happen with gold prices. If you have a strategy and you know what you will do, whatever happens, then you might see how gold fits your portfolio. Also, there is not a stable correlation between gold and uh, inflation. And that's something that we have to discuss here. Gold and inflation. Gold is usually a speculative investment. Thus, investors anticipate what will happen. So there should be a lag between inflation and gold prices over the long term. And then, of course, if you start measuring when it's really, really high and then there is no perfect correlation, maybe just in the very, very long term. Also, they say it doesn't offer reliable downside protection. If you look at how gold or equities behaved over the last times, you can see here about equities, how those crash gold intermediate treasuries and Goldman says how high quality bonds are more reliable source of diversification than gold. Plus you get a yield on those bonds. On cryptocurrencies also probably what their investors, what their clients ask them a lot. So sovereign currencies meet the criteria. They are used as a medium of exchange. They serve as a unit account. They are a store of value and unfortunately cryptocurrencies for now don't really serve those purposes. So it's all about demand and supply and we see here the Bitcoin price surging since 2015, especially in 2017, 18, crashing, rebounding, crashing, rebounding and being very, very volatile. Of course, that is because of the small market capitalization where just a little inflow of money pushes it up significantly and there is a lot of speculation on that. However, they are also warning people about illicit activity, something you can read about if you are more interested about the hacks on the infrastructure, also, something very interesting, I didn't know that there was so many issues, that there were so many issues there. And this is something very nice. So the bubbles, NASDAQ 1999, 2000 bubble, you see this in comparison to the S&P 500. Then you put Bitcoin into perspective, you see it, the huge spike up compared to the NASDAQ bubble. And then also Ethereum with a much smaller market capitalization, which means that a much lower amount of money can move the price. You see here the, how it spiked, I think, a few thousand times in 2017-18. And they are comparing it to all other manias. You don't even see the mania of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tulip prices, a little bit Tulip prices here. So that's just a micro bubble compared to Bitcoin now. So the key takeaway is the economy has bottomed. This is not a depression. Uncertainty, of course, what kind of recovery will have? How long will the unemployment hit last? Will that recover or not? And we will have, will we have additional waves of infections as the economy reopens? Those are the main questions. Fiscal and monetary policies were designed to offset the demand shock and liquidity shock and they think it will not be inflationary. That's something we'll see in the next five to ten years. They're trying to answer questions on a shorter term basis as normal is. Stagflation, according to them, is highly unlikely. The US dollar will not be debased. If that happens, that will happen in fast shocks. So that's something to look down the road linearly. It's un not, un not likely that it will happen tomorrow or that fast or that fast as long as people have confidence in the currency. They don't recommend gold nor they recommend Bitcoin to their clients. So this was the presentation from Goldman Sachs Investment Manager Divisions. And here you have 
whole bunch of disclosures. So you might want to read that to see whether this fits your portfolio or not. Now, just my quick comment here, we can talk economics all we want. The fact is we don't know what kind of recovery we will have. We don't know what will be the COVID situation six months down the road. Nobody knows. That's something you can discuss for ages, but I prefer investing into whatever can happen, into anything can happen, I'm fine. That's value investing, that's margin of safety investing. So if this happens, okay, I won't lose that much money. If that happens, I'll be okay. If this happens, I'll make a really nice return. And that's the key with this channel. So please subscribe and click that notification bell if you like the mindset. We try to own assets that will do well no matter what, all the time. That's an investing strategy, a sustainable investing strategy that I can recommend for the long term and that I know will serve me for the next 50, 60, 70, 80 years, no matter what happens. If I go chase the Bitcoins, the COVID vaccine strategies, that's something that might work here, might work there, but it's unlikely to work as an investment strategy over the next 50 years. So we are looking for sustainable investment strategies. If you agree with that, if you like looking at assets that perform well, that are good real assets over time, then please subscribe and watch another video presented here. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.